Here's a question on many people's minds right now. Will artificial intelligence and other advanced technologies help or hurt us? Mathematician Hannah Fry's new show, The Future, with Hannah Fry aims to demystify the technology that's shaping our lives. Fry is a professor in the mathematics of cities, and she says math can teach us a lot about ourselves, even about love. In the first episode, The 150-Year Life, she discusses advances in our understanding of DNA. Take a look. So now, scientists, they've worked out that if you look along a strand of DNA, you can find these very particular markers along it that can give them an idea of how many epigenetic changes you have experienced, which in a sense gives them a sort of epigenetic clock on your own body. And that can tell them not only how old you are now, but also how long you're likely to live. Oh, we that is some mm. good stuff. Hannah Fry, good morning. How you doing? Very good, thank you. Thank you for having me. So um, this show is about the technology shaping our future. Mm. What would you like the viewers to take away from this? Oh, I think it's that we ha all have a hand in designing it. I think that, that a lot of the time, new technology feels like it's something that's happening to us rather than necessarily with us. And this show is really about opening out those conversations in advance of the, of the technology arriving. So this show covers AI, climate change, the, the quest for a longer life, human mm. emotions. Um, what did you learn? Um, while filming this show? Oh, my gosh, so much, so much. Really? So, yeah, and that, I mean, there's, there's things that I sort of half knew about, and then I would go and speak to the people who are working on it and realise that, that my perception of it was just completely off. Hmm. Like nuclear fusion, for example, right? There's this kind of age-old... Okay, old... talk slowly for me, please. Okay, okay, so age-old <laughs> joke, right? Nuclear fusion, essentially free, clean, unlimited energy mm -hmm. would completely change the world right. forever. Okay. And there's this joke that it's been 30 years away forever. Uh -huh. So, you know, however, however far you get into the future, it's still going to be 30 years away. Mm. You go and meet the people who are working on it in this, uh, in this amazing facility in France, this, like, giant kind of aching monster of this, this, like, international collaboration. And there are people who are standing in front of this technology and they're so frustrated because they're like, we know that this is the thing that will, mm. will save the planet and no one is listening to us. Wow. And then flip over to California, where you have these fast, quick startups. Essentially, like, you know, the, the times when capitalism works at its best. Right. And they are innovating like you would not believe. And suddenly, it feels like a much more optimistic look for the future. Mm. I was fascinated with that first episode mm -hmm. because a lot of people, and you just look at commercials, a lot of people are concerned about the aging process and how to stall it, how to stop it, how to preserve. Is there anything that you do now as a result of doing all of those things? I don't want to give it away. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> to help yourself okay. remain youthful and feeling good. Uh, it's 109 years. <laughs> <laughs> don't I look good? <laughs> no. So I think actually, I mean, again, don't want to give it away. I don't think that there is a silver bullet. There's definitely things that you can do, but when you look at the science of it, it kind of tweaks the tweaks your 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 overall numbers by like a few months or maybe a couple a year of years. Or so. right? It's right. not very much. But what is interesting is I got to go to Japan while I was filming this, this show, and Japan has the longest life expectancy in the world, right? Years and years and years longer than it is in the United States. And it's really hard to put your finger on exactly why that is. But one thing that I really noticed is that the Japanese philosophy of finding... Igati? Or yeah. What was the word? Um, ikigai. Igai. Right? Finding joy in little things. Okay. And mm -hmm. just, like, seeing your life not as this sort of challenge that has to be completed, right. but a, a, a series of moments to be enjoyed. Mm -hmm. So I try and do that. I mean, I try. Okay. I try and do that a bit more. So uh, since we're talking about the future, we should be talking about AI, which you have an episode on. And you uh, seem to be a little more skeptical of AI than a lot of people... Uh, Tell us why, or actually break it down this way. Should we be scared or celebrating the arrival of artificial intelligence? I mean, I think sort of both. I mm. think both things can be true at the same time. Now, don't get me wrong. I think that the, 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 the ability for AI to completely transform the world is, is there, right? I think that we have a, it's a seismic shift, and I think that there's no going back. But I also think that we are not in a world where any AI that's ever been created has, like, a conceptual understanding of what it's doing. They, they, it looks like they can speak amazing, you know, write amazing prose, but it doesn't really understand what it's doing. It's as good a liar as it is at, at mm. telling the truth. Mm. Um, and so I think we have to be a bit careful about putting too much... Uh, imagining that it's, that it's better than it is, because I okay. think that there's danger in that too. 
All right, so you uh, you did a popular TED talk and you mm, wrote a very book about popular. the math very popular <laughs> about the mathematics of love. Yeah. Uh, how does math come into the <laughs> equation, if you will, of one of the rawest, purest emotions. forms of emotions yeah. that humans have? Yeah. Well, so that was kind of the point that I was trying to make, right? And like slightly tongue in cheek too, was that I was trying to demonstrate that that there is a mathematical way of looking at anything, and even in something that is, as you say, one of the rawest, the, the subject that's furthest away from math as possible, yeah. even then there's something you can say. Because there's, there's all sorts of patterns, right, in your, in your dating life, like how many people you date before you decide to settle down, which pictures do well on internet dating. There's an algorithm in life. Mm -hmm. There's, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't take my top tips as, uh, as, as, as absolute cold hard facts, by the right, way. That's right. like, um, my own dating <laughs> life is... Uh... Real quick, can I... <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Careful now. Really quickly, what are the best tips for children, for people who struggle with math? Because you say math isn't everything. How do we make it palatable and easy so people aren't intimidated? For all the 10-year-olds who were not you who apparently enjoyed math. <laughs> yeah. So I think that it is about the enjoyment, though. I really think that's it. So I have two daughters, and for me, it's about making it feel like a playground, yeah. not like you are being yeah. forced into something. That makes sense. Hannah Fry, thank you so much. Thank we appreciate you. you. Cool stuff. We could talk to you all day long. <laughs> all right, you can watch The Future with Hannah Fry starting Wednesday on the Bloomberg app.